travel around the African continent, you're, 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 you're introducing people to Yvonne Chaka Chaka. People are enjoying your music, right? But there's also the opportunity to then collaborate and work with other African artists, right? Let's talk about then those travels and what it was then like to work with African musicians. You know, I still am very baffled how people like Yvonne, Lucky Dube, Brenda Farsi, okay, Mary Makeba, I mean, she's an icon. I mean, she's incomparable. How we made it in those different countries yeah. because there was just radio and television. Yeah. But you go to Sierra Leone, you'll hear a Lucky Dube song. Mm. You go to Kenya, to Uganda, mm. you'll hear that kind of music. Mm. And I think for me that was great because then it was the beginning of South African music expanding yeah. in other African countries. Yeah. But traveling to those countries and meeting people like Manu Dibango, Yusundu, okay. Angelique Kijo, yeah. it opened my eyes. Yeah. You know, Fela Kute. Fela Kuti, I mean, yes. Um, yeah, it was just so exciting. Mm. And uh, I may not have collaborated with all of them, uh, but I'd been on stage with most of them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I've done collaborations with Yusu. I've done collaborations with Susanna Willow from Kenya, mm. uh, Messi Myra. And, uh, and, and, you know, all of them to Kuzi yes. and many other, other artists. Yes. So it has been an eye opener. And fast forward to today, I'm very happy that our young people are doing those collaborations. Yes. You know, um, you know, may his soul rest in peace, AKA yeah. and um, Ben a boy. Yeah. And uh, it should be like that. It really should be like that. Yeah. And I think it's getting better. You know, and uh, it melts my heart when I see, when I traveled either to Kenya or Uganda or Rwanda, and uh, they say, uh, so when the gospel choir was here, Simpiwe Dana or yeah, was in, 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 in yeah, in and it, yeah. It, for me, it, it should be like that. Yeah. yeah. It became so big because Massive. in one country they were thinking I'm a highly political person and this song has got nothing to do, <laughs> to do with politics, with politics. Yeah. and other people were like the song is religious here you know here is the, a person with white eyes coming to save us Mukombosi, something like that it has nothing to do but then I would then get questions and you're talking about such important issues but then you talk about african beer mm, what is where's the correlation, where's the correlation yeah. here and i'm like oh but there's always talking about an african beer <laughs> that's what matters yeah and uh, but the way they interpreted the songs yeah. in different uh, uh, the way they heard it yeah. it just made it so popular yeah. and uh, thanks to to thanks to that not understanding the words interpreting it in your different way yes. and and it made sense to them yeah. at the time but yeah. Uh, yeah we're here today I mean I go to my YouTube channel every time and I see it's like okay Mkombot is like the only song I've ever sang okay because then everybody was like you know when I was young when I was like this this old and now I'm and I'm still dancing to this song <laughs> There's a lot of honor that comes with um, your, your, your journey and I think a lot of people have um, taken the time to actually recognize your musical journey, the impact that you've had on the music lands landscape in South Africa, in Africa, globally as well. So much so that you've received um, honorary doctorates. You've just received your third one <laughs> from TUT, right? How, how, how does it feel when you do get this honor, when you receive the first uh, doctoral degree, the second and now the third? How does it feel? 
You know, for me, it's um, when you are given a platform, use it to the best of your ability. Because I know where I come from. So when I go to any country, whether I'm in Kenya or Uganda or Tanzania or Zimbabwe, I want to know about um, social ills around. And I want to acclimatize myself mm. with the community. Mm. So I don't just go in there in and out. I create relationships. Mm. I help where I can. Uh, whether it's one person or 20 people, or I'm doing workshops with uh, 5,000 people and four of them, you know, benefit from what I've, I've been doing or what I've done, it melts my heart. You need to do something, leave something for the people. In closing, how do you feel about the South African music landscape at the moment? You know, I love the different kinds of genres of music, whether it's Ama Piano, whether mm. it's Guaito, mm. whether, I, I mean, really, music is music. Yeah. Music comes from music. It's how, in a certain time, music evolves. Um, I mean, one of my favorite songs has always been, so <laughs> <laughs> And you know, Mendoza came with that kind of music, uh, thanks to Gaby Leroux. Uh. And it took the world by storm. I must say that I really love the kind of music that is there because the young people are expressing themselves in the best way they know how. The only thing that I'd really want to see really is the playing field being leveled for them. Okay. It's for them, you know, having this environment being conducive. It's difficult for artists, particularly the young ones. Some have got studios at home and mm. in different places, but are they given a chance to explore to make money, to perform continuously, to be visible. So it's important that you ask, you know. And so I'd like to see these young people collaborating with older artists, yes. which becomes a problem sometimes, you know, they don't. But we've walked the, the, the path. Yes. We know how it's yeah. done. You can go to a record company and negotiate. As a young artist, you go there, you want to be famous, you want to be known, you can't negotiate. They give you a five year, 10 year contract and you have to record, they give you an advance and you don't get your royalties mm. and things like that. So mm. you need people who will explain such things to the uh, young artists. Some of them don't even go and register their works and things like that. So there's different CMOs out there that you know continuously do uh, workshops for young people. So I want young people to know about Sambra, know about Capasso, know about Sambra, know about um, other organizations, you know, like for composers, CSMA, mm. and, uh, and align yourself with those organizations. Because, um, yeah, it's not very easy. But I'm, I must say, I love the music. I mean, I love the one of his bodies in Jala. You know, so, <laughs> so, it, so young people, are, are contributing so much yeah. into this industry. Yeah. I hope, you know, um, the bill can be done yeah. to the favor yeah. of the artists. Of artists. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for your contribution to the African musical, musical landscape and just Africa as a whole. Thank you. Awesome stuff. That was Mam Yvonne Chaka Chaka with us right here on The Morning Show. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.